Jumbo, who's Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. Boys, I'm glad you dropped in today because guess what? This is going to be the last episode on restoring the boathouse. <laughs> I bet you'll be glad to hear that. It's going to be long. I'm sorry about it being so long, but uh, uh, you know, it was there was no really good spot to break this up into segments. And I wanted to get this series done because it's been dragging on for so long. So let's get at it. we got a lot of work to do today. So today what I'm working at is I'm starting to do the electrical, starting to re -put, uh, redo the electrical. So what I'm up to right now is in this junction box that's on the deck, I have to re uh, take all those lines out of that octagon box and put them in the square boxes on the wall. So some of these circuits, uh, well, they're all dead except for one feed. So I have to find that feed and uh, disconnect it so that I can tie everything in. So I'm going to do that. And when I come back, I'll have, I hopefully will have them all in this box for you. Well, as you can see now, I've got my box mounted and I've got my feed coming from the camp. That's what that tech cable is coming to the bottom. That's the feed coming from the camp. And then I've got my disconnect mounted for the pump so that we can tie in. We need to run uh, 220 feed over to the pump disconnect and then a feed from the pump, from the disconnect to the pump. And then also a 220 feed from this box direct over to the heater. So I've got this multi-conductor cable come down from the camp that brings the power and everything down here. So I'm starting to identify the connectors or the conductors, I mean. I had gone through them before and put tags on them. Uh, and then what I have is I have, I made this drawing a long time ago that shows the layout of the I have a junction box under the camp for distribution of power. And it shows the layout of the junction box. And then this is what's fed down here to the boathouse and with all the different conductors and what they feed, right? This is the feed that goes back to this uh, thermostat of it. So that's gonna come through here. Yeah, so why don't I do that? Put that right in this knockout right here. So we'll put this in here. Once I loop that around into the box, I'll leave, I don't know, about that much room for wiring in the box. So now we can take this wire and we can feed it through this connector. So I'm just going to tuck that wire in there for now because I'm going to tie that in later. Okay, so now I need a feed to come out of the bottom, run along here and then back up in my box. So I'm going to fish this wire in through here. Okay, I'm going to have to make another entry into this box, so put this box connector right in here. Like that. So now this feed has to come in there with about six inches to spare, so we're going to cut it off about here. Straighten this wire out a little bit. All right, so that's going to come down there, twist around there, and come up there. And this is going to go in here, like so. And then tuck it in the back. All right, so there's the feed to the switch. When I turn that on now, then these terminals will be energized, right? So, I have nothing more to do in this switch till it comes time to hook up the pump. And now, this and this feed is going to go for the pump. So this is going to be pump one. So now we're just going to twist these wires together and then put the mirror connector on it. Check everything. That's good and tight. All right, so that feller is done. And so here's pump two. And then we'll join these two together. Okay, so there's the pump wired up. So the lights are going to be this circuit here. I don't have that tied in the box yet, so now I have to feed that in the box somehow. All right, so that guy's going to go in there like so. Red and the black here in this three conductor. But one of them is going to go for the lights, one of them is going to go for outlets. And we'll put the mirror right back on there. 
Okay. All right. Okay, so here's my heater. It's 24 inches long. It's a, a 300 watt, 240 volt. Takes 1.25 amps, so that's good. Not much of a load, I like that. Okay, so now we have our wire mounted in the box. So now I can locate my box here on the wall. So we'll put this in a little bit, make it half face level. All right, one heater. That's going to come up and go in there. I'm going to need about this much, so I'm going to cut this off so it's not so gangly. Come up here and in my box. All right. Now I can uh, put my thermostat in. All right. And then I'm going to fold out these wires and put them in here. I think I have the power isolated, so let's just check that. Nothing on that guy. And nothing there. All right, I got the power on, and uh, nothing tripped up at the camp. So far, at least, everything seems good down here. All right, uh, this is my new pump. Uh, it's a half horsepower shallow well jet pump. It's got about a five liter pressure tank on it. Pressure tank is pressurized with 25 PSI of air. And there's a bladder in it and the idea of a pressure tank like that is it gives you more of a drawdown before the pump will start it doesn't give you more water but it gives you more of a drawdown before the pump will start so okay i think i've uh, figured out where i'm going to locate the pump the pump is going to go approximately right here i have to put a new piece of uh, line on here this is the suction line and that'll couple up to the pump right here and i have an adapter for that right here now the outlet of the pump comes out here so this is the supply line, the outlet of the pump. So I have a fitting here that's going to go to an outside tap. So that'll go, the outside tap's going to come in here. I'll get that in in a minute. So that'll go on there. And then this line will come around. And what I've done is I've scrounged a 90 degree fitting that will fit in here. Right, so now I can couple that on there. All right, we're gonna thread this in here. The other thing about these fittings is you never know when you're gonna over tighten them. I think that's gonna be all right right there. All right, now we're gonna put some Teflon tape on this fitting. This is for the suction line on the pump. Okay, I think that that turned out all right. It's done a bit of a slope out now, and that's what I wanted. Here's my new piece of one inch pipe. I'm just slipping it on there. And I like to double clamp my uh, pipe fittings just because. Oh, there. 
turn that just sizzled. Did you hear that? All right, that goes on there like so. So the water lines are connected to the pump, but now I have this auxiliary water line for the uh, outside tap. I'm just going to take this off. Okay, hope that comes. up here the only thing left to do now is wire up the pump and prime it put this guy in there Alright, so that's tied in there and it's turned off. The pressures on this pump are preset at 30 to 50 and in order to wire 220 inside this junction box on the motor there's just a little slide switch that says 110 or 220 so I've already moved that to the 220 side so I don't have to make any adjustments on the pressure. I have another uh, box connector for this side so I'll put that on here. the ground wire tied in. Now I have a black and a white or a red so I'm going to put some uh, stick on terminals on these. There we go. When I turn on that switch, this pump will start, but I don't want to start it just yet because we have to uh, prime it. Now I have some water here and I'm going to prime the pump. So I'm filling the pump cavity here at the top of the pump, the impeller and whatnot, and down the suction line to the foot valve in the well crop. All right, so I think I've got my pump cavity filled, so I'm going to put this plug back in here. If there's enough water in the cavity, uh, it'll start to pump and it'll pick up a prime and it'll start pumping. And then once it starts to pump, it'll sort of uh, purge itself and all the air will eventually purge out of it. So what I'm going to do is hopefully draw water out of the crocks, into the pump body, out through here down this braided hose into the pressure tank but out through this line I have this valve shut off so that shouldn't go anywhere because I just want to charge the tank right now and see if it builds up pressure. So here we go, the first start of the pump, see what happens. Well it sounds like it picked up the prime right away. How about that? It picked the prime up right away and so I'm impressed with that. But anyway, let's see what happens when I open this. So I'm flowing water out the wall hydrant. It's also purging air. The pump pressure is dropping. I don't know how well you can see that gauge. I 
And even with water flowing, it'll build pressure and shut off. So the pump is doing pretty good. So uh, because this wall was pushed out, I end up with a little gap in here. Well, not a little, it's about a half inch at the top. It tapers down to nothing at the bottom. But there's also a gap right at the base of this asphalt. So I got some expanding foam. The thing about this is you never know how much to put in, right? Because it'll expand. <laughs> Hits the name. Okay, so we have this outlet wired now, tied in. Cable running across there. I put the uh, socket in with the light in it and I tidied up those wires running over to the other light. And then it comes down that rafter and down here. So that's all done. I've got my uh, uh, expanding foam sprayed in there. So uh, the cover's on, fit on there pretty tight. But that's all right, I want it to be tight. The tighter the better as far as I'm concerned. Uh, pump is holding its pressure good. The wiring is all good. So uh, we have to do some painting. All right, we're gonna start painting this morning. And what I have here is some Bear Premium Plus. It's a, a latex semi-luster, semi-enamel. Just put that on my drill, see what I come up with. There's some mush at the bottom. All right, I've been mixing this now for about 15 minutes. I've got this fancy little gizmo thingy right here. That just screws on here. And then for painting, uh, because I'm not a pro painter, I just went to the dollar store and I bought a bunch of these uh, paintbrushes. They used to be a dollar each. They're two and a half inches, just a nylon bristle. Uh, tapered. I like the tapered ones because you can get into the corners a little easier with it. All right, let's grab my can here, my bucket. We're going to head on down to the boathouse, do some paint. Okay, here we go. First paint on the boathouse. This is exciting, eh? Look at that. Oh, the first paint on the boathouse. Managed today to finish off painting all the trim. The uh, the paint I used was a Bear Premium uh, sash and trim, and uh, I managed to paint it once, and then it dried so quick I was able to come back and put the second coat right on without having to move the ladder. So I lucked out there. Paint the trim first; it's a lot easier. You paint the trim. You can be as sloppy as you want along the edges. You don't have to cut in really well. You have to just make sure all your trim is covered. And then when you put the base coat on, then you can cut in. And it seems like it's easier to cut in the base coat than it is the trim. Hey, big day at the lake here today. Uh, we're going to start painting the boathouse with gray. So I got some more Bear Premium Ultra, this is. And uh, it's made for putting on smart panel. So uh, it, it's not like a stain, eh? So it's like a latex. Anyways, we're going to start putting this on. Hey, 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 one step closer. Won't be long now, eh? Looks better already, right? It started to look kind of sunny, but there's a big dark cloud coming and I can feel rain. Might not be so good.
ping's all finished. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look. So this side, just finished painting this side. Doesn't look too bad, eh? And then this side, didn't turn out too bad. I put the shutters back on. They look pretty nice too. Brightened it up a little. And what I was concerned about here was where I had to machine those grooves in that top gable. I've got two coats of paint on that now. And, uh, I don't know, I think the grooves match up pretty good. Around the front here, I got the doors working good. And I got all the trim painted around there. And then I cut in and painted this side. It looks gray. <laughs> and then I lucked out on this side because... Uh, there's a lattice on there, and Nanny had a beautiful clematis on that uh, trellis along with a rose bush. But uh, because of the storm and a lot of other issues going on, we weren't able to uh, tend to the rose and it kind of died back. And now the clematis is trying to uh, struggle to get some, uh, some sun, but it's looking pretty good. So that doesn't look too bad either, you know. I sure want to thank uh, my sons. Jerry, Chris, and Derek for all the help they gave us doing this. Uh, couldn't have done it without their help, that's for sure. It was a major undertaking getting this boathouse redone. I thought I was going to do it, you know, in a couple of weeks. Well, here it is a couple of months later. We're finishing it up. And uh, I want to thank all you folks for watching too, for, uh, you know, all your patience. Because, uh, <laughs> wow, this was a long project, eh? I don't know how many parts it is, but this is the last one. Thanks for watching everybody. Sure hope you have a great summer. What's left of it now? <laughs> and we'll talk to you.